Dread can be understood as the fear of the known, of knowing something bad will happen. This atmosphere defines the continents of the known world and the great landmass to the east. These are highly competitive places. Predators are overt, ruthless, quick to engage in violent combat. Many herbivores adapted by becoming quite ferocious themselves. Conflict, power, a continent's wide brawl with roars, clashes, and screams permeating the environment. Chimerans often describe their home as a terrifying place. A world defined by brutal encounters or the knowledge that the next conflict is on the horizon. The known world is one of dread. The polar continent of Kaishel, further south than most Chimerans have traveled, is defined by quiet. Some members of its coastal caste are new arrivals. Having crossed the Polar Sea in the years since the dynastic extinction triggered a spike in harvesting activity by the portal, and the residents flourished in adaptive radiation. But most of this continent is old. Unlike the dynamic continental shifts to the north, the polar continent has shifted very little since before even the first harvest in our late Devonian. Its last connection to the portal was over 100 million years ago. Picardia broke off 40 million years ago, and Kaishel has seen very little change since. It is quiet, but none would describe it as tranquil. Fear is thick in the air. There is something at the heart of this continent. Something ancient. Something deadly. Something that gives the inhabitants of this continent a choice. Silence or death. The cold oceans surrounding Kaishel teem with life. A combination of abyssal volcanoes, glacial runoffs, and cold upwells all interplaying with the purple algae endemic to Chimere all culminate in an astonishingly productive ecosystem, the impacts of which are also brought by northward currents into the known world. The top marine predators of these cold oceans include a range of elasmosaurs and cetaceans. Krakens, mosasaurs, giant fish, sharks, walruses, and other sea monsters fill out this predatory cast. Every summer, as the prolonged sun melts the few glaciers found in Kaishel, a smorgasbord is to be had from the runoffs that flow into the gulf that cuts almost all the way to the South Pole. This bounty, called Whalehaven Gulf, supports over a dozen large filter feeders, with some familiar species like humpback whales, other whales that aren't found on Earth but still recognizable to a clade, and other far stranger filter feeders, like marine scorpions and krakens. The rocky shorelines are packed with pinnipeds. Unlike the eared seals that are more familiar to us, the diversity of walruses is much higher than on Earth, with many species occupying a range of niches. True seals are also in abundance, with the largest being the Urquet. Their six to seven ton bulls are the largest pinniped to ever evolve on Earth or Chimere. Although some coastlines have sheer drops into the abyss, many expand as shallows for hundreds of miles. In these habitats, kelp forests are in abundance. Sirenians are among the largest and most common kelp grazers, the largest of which weigh over 15 tons, but there are also dinosaurs, non-therian mammals, a clade of temnospondyls that feeds on these fast-growing forests, while cetaceans, penguins, and walruses are among the many that feed on the benthic fauna on the marine forest floor. Hyenodonts are perhaps a curious member of this coastal caste. On Earth, they were mostly terrestrial hypercarnivores. On Chimere, they found success in the Tyrant Dynasty by adapting to be semi-aquatic and marine predators. In modern Kaishel, hyenodonts are abundant and diverse both as marine predators and the most common terrestrial mammalian hunters. Some specialize in seals, others in hunting in the dense kelp forests, while one clade returned to the land and has diversified into cat-like ambush hunters and bear-like omnivores. Before the arrival of the hyenodonts, there was only one clade of large mammalian predators, the panther possums. 
These gobiconodonts evolved from arboreal predators in the silent forest, specializing in quick, overpowering kills, both grasping hands and a bone-crushing bite. Although hyenodonts quite outnumber them in diversity and population, they proudly hold the title for largest terrestrial mammalian predator, the Nokutlok. This massive beast often weighs four tons. They are generalist hunters, happy to bring down large game on land and sea. They are sinkers and won't hesitate to venture into the kelp forests, ambushing prey from the kelp forest floor and dragging it to shore. Some terrestrial mammals are quite familiar to us, like caribou, foxes, pikas, and wolves. They were brought by the Tokaten, a group of Kalin who have a mercantile relationship with the indigenous peoples of Kaishel for thousands of years. As the currents flow northward to the known world, not many animals were brought to Kaishel by floating debris as we see in our own history, such as New World monkeys coming from Africa. Many animals, like hyenodonts, sloths, and pinnipeds, swam of their own accord. Most of the mammals in Kaishel have been isolated since the early Cretaceous. Most of these mammalian megafauna are multituberculates. Some are mistaken for giant rodents by the toe cat, and others are so strange that description of them has so confounded naturalists from Balonukoi that they don't even consider them mammals, although they certainly share our clade. Despite these beasts, Kaishel is still a world defined by dinosaurs as its most numerous large animals. As is the case in much of Chimere, the largest terrestrial animals are sauropods. The Kurdu is by a wide margin, the largest. Live births, higher intelligence, and fast metabolisms set them quite apart from other Chimerean sauropods, which in many ways aren't too different from taxa we're familiar with on Earth. They have a range of bioluminescent and ultraviolet coloration that they use to keep in communication in the silent forest. There is also a clade of basal iguanodontians with impressive antlers and colorful displays, all traits meant to be the visual equivalent of bellows in a world that has forced them to be quiet. The largest and apex terrestrial predator in Kaishel is an oviraptorsaur called the Ketrek. These giants share much in common with unrelated terror birds. There was once a clade of large predatory theropods, but when they went extinct, a group of giant omnivorous oviraptorsaurs stepped up to the plate and succeeded with flying colors. Other large theropods are therizinosaurs, herbivorous oviraptorsaurs, and several species of terrestrial and antiornithian birds. Dromaeosaurs have several representatives that, for the most part, wouldn't stand out amongst early Cretaceous taxa. A wide range of birds are found in Kaishel. Penguins are quite diverse and successful on the shores, as are raptors, gulls, auks, puffins, and corvids. In keeping with the trends of pressure living in a world of silence, the Ornantiornithian birds of Kaishel are vocally silent, but their visual displays can be astonishing. A clade that truly exemplifies the connection between dinosaur and bird are the firebirds, so named for their iridescent yellows and oranges common in these members of the clade in the known world, like the Indrakai. On Kaishel, where they evolved, the vivid displays make a great deal of sense, as do their feathers ending in serrations, making for almost noiseless beats of the wing. These theropods possess a potent, calming, venomous bite, which aids in their quick kills in the silent forest. There is ongoing debate among chimera naturalists if they are a type of very primitive bird, or if they are one of the dromaeosaurs. Their close relatives, the penguin raptors, are marine hunters that use their venom to make quick kills not to avoid sounds in the silent forest, but to make as little noise as possible that might attract other predators in the highly competitive coastal waters. One of these animals, the shul, has a small population in the known world. Another clade of winged animals that has made Kaishal their home are the pterosaurs. 
Titan crows and banshee gulls from the known world are common in the bountiful summers, but fly north when the winters make the continent unwelcoming. One clade of pterosaurs doesn't have this luxury, as long ago they surrendered their wings to quietly climb through the silent forest. Their wing finger became greatly reduced in size and far more flexible, functioning as a thumb. These descendants of tapijarids are quite diverse and extremely intelligent, with some having tool use and even simple visual language and culture. Many species were also found on Picardia when the Great Island broke off from Kai Shell. Although competition with sloths and primates has greatly reduced their diversity. The indigenous peoples of this continent have called Kaishel home for over a million years. Called the Tlatan, or Children of Silence, by the Kalin explorers who met them, these people do not have a spoken language. All of their speech is done through expression and hand signs. Although the coast is loud and boisterous, being not dissimilar from other regions of Chimere, they still speak in silence. Researchers of Bolondkoi have speculated that, like the Maku, their vocal range is limited compared to Chimerans and our own, and while this may be a factor, mostly it's the sensible adaptation to a world where being quiet is a good trait to possess. They trade many wondrous things to the Kalin merchants who meet them, mostly looking for bronze in return. Although many Chimerans prefer steel, the Tlatan like bronze, since it resists corrosion and it is quite easy to repair or remake if damaged, and they cannot mine for metals in the mountains of their silent world. Although the coasts are filled with bellowing seals, crashing waves, howling winds, and roaring monsters, the forests of the island's interior are dreadfully quiet. When they do go inland, the Tlatan pad their feet and wear armor hardened by salt. During the bountiful summer months, when the days are long, the coasts provide everything they need. During the winter, which is often months of seemingly endless night, the Tlatan, and indeed many terrestrial animals, are forced to brave the silent forest in search of food. Despite the cold nights, the forests are quite insulated, with many evergreen foliage being found and harvested. There is enough food for some animals, like firebirds and flightless territories, to make these trees their home year-round. As one ventures deeper into the forests, it can feel as though one is walking through time to a place so ancient and alien that it is unrecognizable. The trees themselves are often hundreds of feet high and thousands of years old, with wide, canop with wide interlocking canopies that insulate the world below. Aside from seasonal desperate migrants, most flora and fauna in these trees have been here since before Kaishel was isolated. Many animals can trace their origins to the first portals bringing Terran life to Chimere 400 million years ago. There is a great diversity of endemic Chimeran life here. Many are seen as floating lights, shining with bioluminescence and colors that our eyes couldn't possibly perceive. These floating aeroplankton are contained and insulated within the forest, and support a healthy ecosystem unlike any that we see here on Earth. Some of this endemic life is very tall and seems to sway as though underwater while gathering nutrients from the silent air. Although Chimere has no multicellular endemic life, some clonal hives gather multiple species to form strange composite organisms floating with helium sacs and filter-feeding the aeroplankton. A few brave platin harvest aeroplankton every year, which they trade to Kalin merchants as strange flavorings and radiant dyes. The pressure that keeps everything silent is currently unknown to Chimera naturalists. From a wide range of stories told by the Tlatan and translated by the Kalin, it can be difficult to say much with any certainty. There are a few commonalities within the stories. It is some sort of being, will attack with any significant sound, and is afraid of salt. Salt is quite sacred among the Tlatan for this reason. They say that the snapping of a twig won't draw in the silent ones, 
but it's hard to say what exactly is the level of noise that will, so it is best to stay as quiet as possible. Following rivers and wearing as much salt as possible is the only way to safely travel in these woods. Although the language of the first children has not been officially translated, historians of Bolondokoi have found evidence from codices of the first children who explored Kaishel, and the silent forest was supposedly the only place in the near world that they feared. For such to be said of a civilization that mastered magic, reversed the direction of the portal, and created demons, such is not a statement to be taken lightly. From its quiet interior to the boisterous shores, Kaishel is a wondrous continent quite distinct from known Chimere. A strange world of quiet and cold. Thank you all so much for joining me today. This marks the final installment in Chimere for this year. I started this channel in March and have been amazed by the growth and reception. It's given me a lot of confidence to continue developing Chimere further. Now that this channel has been monetized, I can afford to dedicate less time to work and commissions and more time to Chimere. This is a development that really excites me. If you are able, I would very much appreciate you considering supporting me on Patreon. Aside from being able to upload higher resolution pictures than on other social media platforms, at the moment, I don't have any Patreon-exclusive content. Simply put, I want to avoid making people pay to enjoy this stuff as long as possible. If you are able to support me, though, even in just the first or second tier, that adds up fast in helping me continue working on this project. More time not only means more videos, but I will hopefully be able to dedicate more time next year to working on an illustrated bestiary and a detailed wiki cataloging cultures, flora and fauna, and other aspects of Chimere. Now that my channel is monetized, watching the ads also helps a lot more than you might think, so watching and sharing is an excellent way to support Chimere. I will be going on a brief hiatus from now until February, during which time I will be working on the second editing pass of my first novel in Chimere, The Lost Hellfighter. have some really exciting videos planned for when Tales of Chimere comes back in February. On Christmas Day, I've got one last present for y'all in the form of my video contribution to Paleo Rewind, a collaborative series from Edge which goes over the major discoveries and studies published this past year. I'll be covering the studies in late June, focusing on the ones that influenced Chimere to give some insight in how I incorporate often fresh-off-the-press studies in my work. Want to give a quick shout out to John, aka J Stocky, on Twitter. In addition to providing a ton of really fantastic pieces for this video, in addition to others that I'm sure you've seen before, John has a project of his own. It is a hollow earth, underground prehistoric world inspired by the likes of Edgar Rice Burroughs and Ice Age 3. It is a work of speculative evolution full of non mammalian Mesozoic to Cenozoic fauna and is the setting for the webcomic that he's working on, Journey Through Hollow Earth. If you like Chimere and speculative evolution in general, I highly suggest you check him out. Some really fantastic stuff. I love the style and emotion he gives his characters. That's all for today. I hope you enjoyed this introduction to a new region of Chimere. Thank you all so much for your support this year. It's been thrilling to see so much interest and excitement, and the sales of my Tales of Chimere short story anthology have far surpassed my most optimistic projections. This all feels more real every day. Thank you all again. Do at least three kind things today for yourself or others. Set aside a moment to create, to breathe. You've got this. Stay fantastic. Cheers, folks.